Welcome to Great Moments in Pi History. First, we'll go to Egypt and Babylon between 1900 and 1850 BC, where ar archaeologists unearthed a papyrus and tablet with early written approximations of Pi, that mystical 3.14 number that we all encounter in geometry. Now, let's head to Greece in 5th century BC, where the ancient Greeks are believed to have originated pie pastry. In the plays of Aristophanes, there are mentions of sweetmeats, including small pastries filled with fruit. Follow me to Scotland, the birthplace of the pie chart. William Playfair, the founder of Graphical Methods of Statistics, debuted the pie chart in his book, Statistical Breviary, published in 1801. We'll jump to Italy for our next pie. It is believed that the pizza, as we know it today, with red sauce topped with cheese, was invented in 1889, when a Neapolitan pizza maker was commissioned to create a pizza in honor of the visiting Queen Margarita of Italy. We will find the last pie today. We can use it in our reading to unearth the author's purpose. That is, the reason he or she writes. We can boil it down to three major purposes. To persuade, to inform, and to entertain. Writing to persuade. In a text that is written to persuade, the author's primary purpose is to compel readers to take action, convince them of an idea through argument, or to reaffirm their existing beliefs. Here are a few examples of texts that are written to persuade. Advertisements, campaign speeches, persuasive letters or notes. Remember that there may be crossover with writing to persuade with other purposes. For example, readers or viewers may find a television commercial to be extremely entertaining. Such a video may even go viral because so many people find it enjoyable. Nonetheless, the primary purpose of such a text is to persuade people to purchase a product or service. Writing to inform. The primary purpose of texts that are written to inform is to enlighten the reader or provide the reader with information about a topic. Here are some examples of texts that are written to inform. Expository essays or articles, such as this newspaper article. Textbooks, encyclopedias or other reference texts. Cookbooks, instructions or directions. Again, the lines separating these distinctions may blur. A text that is written to inform may entertain readers. For example, many readers find reading the newspaper to be very entertaining. But the primary purpose of the majority of the text is to provide information. From other reference texts, some readers may learn about ninjas, dinosaurs, or robots solely for enjoyment. But the author's main purpose in writing such texts is to inform the reader. The last purpose is writing to entertain. The primary purpose of texts that are written to entertain is to amuse readers and evoke emotion, whether it be joy, sorrow, or even fear. Here are some examples of texts that are written to entertain. Plays, such as Romeo and Juliet, stories, and poems. Of course, this is not to say that stories, poems, or plays cannot be informative. These texts may even express values and ideas that will persuade readers to view the world differently. Nonetheless, if the text is not entertaining, readers are unlikely to find enlightenment or be moved by such a text. Therefore, the primary purpose of any text, poem, or play is to entertain readers. Identifying the author's purpose may be challenging to you if you haven't had much exposure to this skill. But after a little bit of practice, most students will correctly identify the author's purpose with consistency. Use these three questions to help you do so. First, is the text a poem, play, or story? If the text is a poem, play, or story, then it's safe to say that the author's main purpose is to entertain readers. If the text is not a poem, play, or story, ask yourself the next question. Does the text provide a lot of facts and information? If the text is primarily providing readers with facts and information, then we can conclude that the author's main purpose in writing the text is to inform readers. If the text does not contain an abundance of what appears to be factual information, then go to the next question. Number three, is the text attempting to get the reader to do something? If the text contains many arguments and claims, or a call where the reader is urged to take action, then the author's main purpose is to persuade. If the text does not appear to be persuasive, reanalyze the text and repeat the process. So we've reached the end of this video. Great job. In the next video, we'll take the three questions that we just looked at and apply those to a number of passages to determine the author's purpose. Please go ahead and write down the keyword if your instructor wants you to go ahead and insert it in a quiz.